Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? Who you're being determines the actions that you will take. And if you don't know who you're being, essentially your essential nature, the context that you're holding, if you don't know who you're being, you'll find yourself taking actions that don't produce the results that you want. And then you'll find yourself getting activated into anger and upset and frustration and doubt, which then influences your being even more. And next thing you know, you're taking actions from those places and you get in a loop. You're, it's, it's like you're on the treadmill from hell, never actually achieving and accomplishing the things that are in, inside of you, that, that you're inspired to accomplish. Today, I wanna to continue our process of recontextualizing taking action. My name is Matthew Ferry, and I'm bringing you your daily enlightenment. It's your moment to pause, to slow down, to get connected to enlightened perspectives. I want to help you to quiet your mind and restore your peace. Who you're being determines what actions you'll take. And who you're being is your essential nature. It's the, it's the context. It's the framework. And we've talked about this on the last daily enlightenment. It's kind of like this. You're you're in the world and here's the, the stuff that you're presented with, your family members, the, the conditions, the circumstances, the, the political environment, the, you know, the, where you were born, right? There's all of this stuff, all of these conditions present. And you would think that the conditions themselves are making you who you are today. That's 100% that does not muscle test strong. And as you know from my work, what we do is we look for what are the strengthening things and what are the weakening things. And it is weakening to think that you are an effect of your environment. That weakens you. So that doesn't make it true or false. Remember, we don't even know if we're being honest. But what strengthens you is that your environment shapes what you already were. You came in a certain way. You came in predisposed to certain things. You're not like your brothers. You're not like your sisters. You're not like your parents. You're, you're, you are this, you're this unique individual coming through that is, is being shaped by the environment. But here's the shaping. Here's how it occurs. You experience the environment through your senses. That is then processed through your consciousness. Your consciousness is not only the pre-existing um, uh, information from this lifetime, but it's through, through time. You are an infinite being. And that infinite nature has had all these experiences and all of this stuff, and it's logged and registered in consciousness. And that information is then mixed with what you're, occur or what is you're experiencing now. Then that gets triggered and says, okay, in order to survive, what should I use? And here's a little graph for you. If you are watching the video, you can see it. If you're on the, um, if you're listening on the podcast, I apologize, you can't see it. But here's what it is. You'll see it in my book. The hidden motives to survive get triggered. Greed, grudge, hatred, victim, illogical rules, humble, traitor, pride, resistance, lazy. Which one of these is an effective thing to use in order to survive? That right there is why you take action. It, it, you don't get the things that you want exactly. You don't feel good about it. You achieve and accomplish. It doesn't satisfy you. You feel like you're never gonna get where you wanna go. You feel like you're on the treadmill from hell. All of that is occurring because you are connecting with survival-based consciousness and that survival-based consciousness is inspiring your action. If you did not watch the last video or listen to the last daily enlightenment, please do that. Okay. Because that, that, that takes you to the baseline of this. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little workshop and we're going to try and figure out who have you been being lately? What is your essential nature? That's being. And I want you to just start to answer these questions for me. Okay. How would you describe the core of your being right now? Like what word describes who you're being? Like what are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to show the world? What are you trying to accomplish or, or have everyone know about you? What are you trying to accomplish by being that? Like by being the person that everybody is knowing? And what is your motivation what is your motivation to be all of that? Now take that.
for a moment, right? So you might you might come up with um, make a difference or valued or or uh, you know successful or accomplished. I don't know, right? What it is a loving? I want to be a loving person, right? Whatever that is. Then you need to answer this question: What's important to you about being that? And then you need to answer this question. So hopefully you're pausing this and you're and you're writing some notes down or you're thinking with me here, okay? This is not a, uh, uh, don't be like a cow chewing a cud, watching the train go by. Participate here, please, okay? So then the question is, what will being all of that do for you? And then the final question is ultimately, if you take all everything that we just talked about, ultimately, what will all of that do for you? So you want to start to take that word that you came up with. And I want you to start to put it through the washing machine of, is this a survival-based word or is this an enlightened-based word? Is this a survival-based word or is this a thriving-based word? So your mind tells you that you aren't going to survive unless you do something to get somewhere. But here's the thing that you need to know. All of that doing is just survival in disguise. And the truth of the matter is you don't have to do something to get somewhere. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. And if you read my book, Quiet Mind, Epic Life, and you go into chapter nine, you'll see that there's a whole set of enlightened perspectives that really bust this idea that there's anything that for you need to, that you need to accomplish. And, and that is so liberating because the moment you don't need to accomplish anything, you can do what feels good, what makes you happy, what turns you on, which means if you want to, you can relax more. You can chill more. You can do less. And someone like you, when you relax more, when you chill more, when you do less, that's when the best stuff starts to come out of you. What's at your core will determine the actions that you take. So if you're in a frantic survival state, in this illusion that you have to do something to get somewhere, to accomplish something, that's an illusion. If you're in that illusion, it will influence everything that you do. So I'm just wondering, which of these perspectives can you connect with? Let me give you some survival perspectives. Skeptical, cautious, intense, serious, determined, trying, action-oriented, frustrated, cynical, resigned, paranoid, pissed off, hurt, wounded, agitated. Those are some survival being states. Here are some enlightened being states. Available, natural, neutral, fun, peaceful, powerful, joyous, loving, kind, good-hearted, open, outrageous, interested, intrigued, inspired, curious. Which one of those lists was more oriented towards how you are experiencing life today? Or do you have a combination? I suspect you have a combination. I suspect you have some of the things on the, on the um, uh, survival list and some of the things on the enlightened list. And I want you to know that that creates an imbalance in your consciousness. It creates a push-pull. You, my friend, are predisposed to the list of enlightened frameworks. And you have this legacy information from all the times that humans have existed and you have existed, whatever version of that, however that occurred, right? You're an expression of everything behind you. So you're like the next evolution coming through, whether that's the DNA mixing together and hi, how are you? Mom, dad, blah, blah, hi, boom, right? So you are, you're an expression of the past coming through and you have this old information that doesn't make any sense for you because you're not in a survival state. Yet all of those survival things that we talked about create a force rather than a power. And that creates a 
malfunction inside of you. So I want you to think about it in this way. The universe, God, source, the background field of energy and information is coming through you. And it is creating and you are what is being created. And everything you're creating is what the universe or God or source or the background field of energy information, that's kind of what I have sort of zeroed in on as, a, as the way to describe it, right? The quantum field, essentially. That, that thing is, that is creating. And you, so the things that you say, I'm creating this, I'm creating this success, this business, this family, this, this life, these experiences, it's kind of bullshit, actually. What's happening is, you are the creative force of the universe. And all of these results that are occurring in your life can't be separated from you. You are the creation. The creation is you. And you are what is being created. And I know that that's pretty heady, but I really want you to work on connecting with that. Now, if you're acting out of fear, essentially, you're malfunctioning. You're blocking the things that are coming through. If you're acting out of certainty, then you're flowing and those things will occur. If you're suffering in any way, you're out of balance with the actual situation. You have pre-existing information from survival times that is actually imbalancing you and, and, and throttling back the creative force that's coming through you. If you're making anybody wrong, including yourself, if you're upset, or if you're mad, or, or you don't like what other people are doing, you're, you're essentially out of balance. You're blocking the situation. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It doesn't matter. The right people and the right circumstances and all the right actions will happen as a natural expression of you optimizing your inner state for enlightenment. So you seeking peace and joy and love and kindness and certainty and happiness and fulfillment actually creates the condition, the fertile ground for the effortless flowing action and you achieving the things that are in your mind. And here's the thing you need to just keep, I just want you to hold this perspective. You didn't think of these things. The thoughts thunk themselves. You didn't think them. You didn't come up with the ideas. The ideas became, they emerged. And you are the expression of that emergence. So not all plants grow in the forest. Some die off because the conditions aren't conducive to them growing. It's the same thing for your ideas. Your ideas are like, it's like you're the garden and there's some plants that are going to grow and some that won't. The question that I have for you is, are you going to be the next evolution, the next evolution of humanity that is essentially becoming the, the gardener and having these things come about? Many people in your past, maybe many times of your past, and when I say past, I mean past lifetimes, past generations, have been the front runners of this. But now it is here for everyone. And you are an expression of that. So my question to you is, who are you committed to being? And what survival being states or context are you going to release? Put them in the comments for me. I want to know. Like this video, please. You watched it all the way through. Come on. Like it. Share it with the people in your life. Subscribe to my channel. My name is Matthew Ferry, and I am the author of Quiet Mind Epic Life, and I'm super stoked that you're watching these things. Thank you so much for tuning in to this daily enlightenment.